Hello YouTube, Mr. Report and Tutor Subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is July the 14th, 2020. And this is a Mr. Report and a special report for Karen. She has questions about Adam, Eve, the serpent, Cain, and Abel. And she writes, Well, first of all, I, I thank you for your gracious support and my apologies for the delay and my apologies to misreport subscribers it looks like every other week I'm going to be able to make a misreport doing my best in uh, under the circumstances the, uh, the second wave coming up is going to be similar to the first wave it's, it's in uh, a month from now the second wave is going to crest and the world is going to get really crazy again and well, you guys will see what, uh, what's going to happen. But that affects my workload a lot and struggling a little bit. And uh, you guys are getting my absolute best. So Karen, she, she writes, she says, she's in Chapter 4. She's reading my book, The Mystery Explained. And she says, so did Adam and Eve have children before the fall? And the serpent had sexual intercourse with Eve, resulting in Cain. And the answer to that is no. Lord God formed Adam from the dust of the ground. First, I'm going to give you a little background information, lay down a foundation. Then from there, then the rest of the questions will make, my answers to the rest of the questions will make perfect sense. No, the Lord God formed Adam from the dust of the ground, that's the water witness from the earth, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, which is the spirit witness from the heavens. And the man, the spirit, blood, and water, became a living soul in heaven now, that's the thing to realize many believe that Adam was created on the earth at the very beginning when in reality the Lamb of God is the one that's formed him the Lamb of God the Lord God same thing and the environment where he was made included the spirit the water and the blood making him a living soul so he is a begotten person Similar to Jesus Christ, the only begotten from heaven, there is a corresponding on earth. On earth as in heaven, well, Adam is the heavenly component. The Lord God formed Adam from the dust ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man, spirit, blood, and water, became a living soul. The Lord God, who is the Lamb of God, Standing in heaven, if you go to Revelation 7.17, he's in the center of the throne there. He reached down to take the dust from the ground and reached up to take the breath of life from the heavens and mix the two together. This is very, very similar to the power from on high, who's the spirit witness, and the Holy Spirit, who's the water witness, from Luke 1.35. So that Adam became a living soul. So he was begotten. He's the only son of God, little s, on the earth. Whenever you go through the genealogy, you'll see it goes all the way back to Adam, the son of God, little s, corresponding to the begotten son of God with a big S, who is Christ. Okay, so, so Adam became a living soul, and this is the same three witness mystery set that you see in Genesis 1. 6 through 8, where the water is above the heavens, the water is below the earth, and the firmament expanse is called heaven, which is also begotten, and that's the common trait between all blood witnesses. When you read my book, you'll see charts that show the spirit, blood, and the water that testify for the original singularity. So Adam in Genesis 2 7 is the singularity. Adam, Eve, and her seed testify for Adam who is the incarnation of a man testifying for the entire earth of Genesis 1-1. Heavens, heaven, and earth from Genesis 1-6-8. The key here is that Adam is a heavenly being, host, interacting with the Lamb of God, the Lord God, and the tree of life. If you go to Revelation 22 and just start reading, you'll see that there are trees there, there's fruit there, and there, the tree of life is there. This is all happening in heaven. So you consider, just consider Christ's common phrase on earth as it is in heaven, which from last week in 
other lessons you learn is an incomplete statement. It's made to Israel about the heaven and the earth, but it goes back to the infinite realm. So if you completed the phrase, it would be on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in the infinite realm, where you are gods. Acts 2, I mean, Psalms 82, 6, Christ quotes David in John chapter 10, verses 34 through 36. So the key is to Adam is a heavenly being interacting with the Lamb of God, the trees, the fruit, heavenly environment. There's no procreation going there. There's no procreation in heaven. That's only on the earth. That's why flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Correspondingly, angels cannot inherit the kingdom of God unless God rips the veil open and brings the messengers in for use on the earth. This is the diagram used before. So when Adam was made in Genesis 2 7, he had all these components in one man. The spirit part, the blood part, the water part is what makes the man. You remember male and female from Genesis 1 26 through 28. We're going to mention that here down below. But you'll notice that the male and the female comprise the man. And the man part is not a reference to a human being man. It's a reference to having three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water all together, having a spirit, soul, and a body. Just like Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2.5. The man, Christ Jesus, is the heavenly man, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as a man. That's who Christ Jesus is, that Paul interacted with, from where he received all the revelations after our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified and raised from the dead. That's why that makes Paul the steward of the dispensation of God's grace, just like Moses. So he was used to send our marching orders for the body of Christ, which is the blood witness part of Scripture, which is different from kingdom doctrine from the kingdom part of the New Testament. So your New Testament has water and blood section, and we have to place that veil in between. So Adam includes the three witnesses of spirit, Adam, water, Eve, and her seed, which is not written there, but they're the blood. You can see it here in the red. See the red? Okay. All combined together within the man that you see in the pre-fall on the left. This guy right here. So the Lamb of God, who is the Lord God, reached inside of Adam and removed Eve and her seed from his side. For the water and blood to emerge from his side. Which Christ typifies on the cross when his side was open in John 19.34. There's a lot of wisdom right here if you can see it. You're going to cross-reference that to 1 John chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. He is the one who came in water and blood. See that water and blood is mentioned throughout the Bible. And it's up to us to recognize the pattern and make the connections. So that Christ died and descended into the earth. So Adam and Eve are heavenly hosts all the way to Genesis 3.21, where the Lord God put them in human skins. So just in the verse prior to that, you see, Mother Eve is mother of all living. That's all human hosts. And if you just take out the human, it's more accurate. All hosts, all hosts on the earth, have heaven's counterparts. So I was mentioning in another lesson that even the animals have souls, that are begotten by the overlapping of their heavens part and their earth part. Containing, okay, so Eve is mother of all the living, containing good and bad seed in her through the fruit that she ate, which is heavenly. While Adam's body contains their spiritual, spirit witness counterparts from the heavens above. So all living are in Eve and all their heavens part, the angel part, is inside of Adam. So neither Adam nor Eve nor the serpent had intercourse in heaven environment, but the good bad seed were introduced into Adam and Eve through the deception, the transgression from 1 Timothy 2.14. And eating of the heavenly fruit containing the seeds of all the generations to be sown and gathered on the earth for all the ages to come. So here, from here, we can address the next question. Were Cain and Abel fraternal twins? Origin of yin and yang. 
the origin of yin and yang actually if you look at the history it's about 3500 years ago the events of a garden took place before the concept of yin and yang were even devised so no cain is conceived and born in genesis 4 1 while abel is conceived and born in genesis 4 2 the verb see this verb right here that appears there in the, in the uh, new the new american standard bible is the first word and again so whenever that again is placed in genesis 4 2 it's a reference back to genesis 4 1 that again the things happen with abel that happened the same things that happened with abel happened with cain because it was happening again now that can be interpreted to mean that uh, the king came out directly afterwards but the correct interpretation is that these are two totally separate things there's one's good seed which is abel and one's bad seed that's cain and it's not mentioned in this report but whenever we're having children the good seed and the bad seed are mixed so you can have a cane you can have an able and any of the seed that comes forth that's just the way it is and that good seed bad seed combination takes place within families based upon what happened in the infinite realm and our interaction as gods there some people it appears like they get lucky they get all able some people it seems like they're unlucky they get all canes but there's a reason for it the cause is back in the infinite realm this is the effect realm right here so then uh, <clears throat> the fact that Cain was conceived from your seed and Abel was conceived from her seed does not does include the sons of darkness and light aspects that carry through God's word demonstrated in the wheat chaff the sheep and the goats at the judgment the sheep put on one side the goats put on one side the wheat is put over here the chaff is burned because the bad seed is going guess where into the lake of fire but they're all sown together and god sends rain on both they'll grow up together and then they're separated at the harvest which is the judgment next question but what was adam sin? that's a common question a lot of people are looking at it going exactly what was it did he have sexual intercourse with a serpent? No, there's no such thing as intercourse in heaven. Heaven is a place of singularities. Blood witnesses. Was the serpent introducing bisexuality? No, sexuality has absolutely nothing to do with anything until Adam and Eve are putting skins down on the earth. Everything in heaven is happening until Genesis 3.20 through Genesis 3.21 is where the change takes place. You don't see any procreation until Genesis 4.1. After, you see the curses is given in Genesis 3.15 and onward. And after they're cast down onto the earth, the earth counterpart to the heaven, that right? Where the lamb is, the tree of life and all that. And then the heavens has a counterpart too. All these three things are happening on earth as it is in heaven as it is in the heavens of this creation so then when we read the passage it says read from the passage it says for and this is first timothy 2 for it was adam who was first created we just went through that and then eve was taken from his side so these are the only two human begottens they don't have belly buttons they were made Adam was made, Eve was taken out of him and formed and made too from his inward part. These are the only two begotten, and you can read about them in Zechariah chapter 4, start at verse 11. The two olive trees are that represents their incarnation on the earth. As the lamp stands, represent their heavenly counterpart, where they stand before the Lord of all the earth. They are there incarnate right now. They've been there the whole time, sending a friend there, but they also incarnate on the earth. The thing about Adam and Eve, they're the, la they're the last two witnesses of Revelation 11. They are Abraham and Sarah, David and Bathsheba. You see the water sign on Bathsheba? David and Bathsheba, they testify to what I'm saying perfectly. David over here looking over into the pool is the heavens looking over into the earth. Bathsheba's over there. She has all the seed because that's Eve, an incarnation of Eve. And Adam and Eve, you see, it's a little bit, if you've never considered the concept, because 
Hebrews 9.27 applies to all Seventh-day people. Die once in the judgment, except for the two begottens. They're the only two exceptions to that rule. That's why you see Elijah was taken to heaven without seeing death because he's testifying for all the angels because he's another skin. The skin thing and the belt, the skin, same thing with Elijah and John the Baptist, carries through in the types. These are incarnations of Adam. So when, when Christ says that if you can bear it, that John the Baptist is Elijah, who is to come. And then he says to them, when they come down for the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17, he says that John already came, but they did not recognize him. Now, practically everybody that reads the Bible believes that means they didn't recognize him as Elijah, but that is not what the truth is. Christ tells them that this is Elijah. He's already told them that he's Elijah. They could already recognize him as Elijah. He's saying that they didn't recognize him as the little s son of man, the little s son of God. The one that keeps coming again and again and again to testify to his obedient children and to his disobedient children. Adam and Eve, they're the two witnesses of the two olive trees that continue to testify over and over and over again. They keep testifying on the earth because they have to replay and redo in the skins what happened in the infinite realm. So, it wasn't Adam. He was first created, but it was not Adam. Very deliberate statement here. It was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. And then keep in mind that the male-female, just like in Genesis 1, 26-28 for six-day people, it's not the same thing, but it's like it, comprise the man. The male and the female comprise the man. And that the female is the water witness. She was the one falling into transgression, taking the spirit witness, male, Adam, with her. Adam stands in the same position of the creation in the truth revealed by Paul to the Romans. He says, for the creation, which is the earth of Genesis 1-1, was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, that's God through the Lamb of God, in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom and the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. Creation's waiting for us, the body of Christ, to be raptured so that we can be glorified, so that we can occupy the heavenly seats that are vacated when God changed Satan. He changed he changed the devil, he changed the beast, he changes the false prophet, and then all the members of their body, that leaves heaven silent. He judges us, puts us in the pecking order, and then he gives us responsibilities, and we sit in those chairs, and we assist Elijah in restoring all things on the earth. The earth can't be restored now because the devil's children are still in the heavenly, they're the heavenly powers of this darkness. That's Ephesians 6.12. And it refers back to the darkness of Genesis 1-2 that was on the face of the deep. Same darkness, Genesis, that fell in Genesis 1-2 is the same darkness that sits in those heavenly forces right now. The sons of darkness are the seed from, guess who? Cain. <laughs> They're the bad guys. The good guys are the sons of Abel. The children of the light. So, Adam and the earth are both Subjected to futility because of him who subjected. This is part of God's plan. From the beginning, before heaven and earth were ever created, Adam was going to fall. Had to fall because he fell in the infinite realm. God has to reproduce that. Eve is being used. She's the one that was deceived and fell into transgression. So, as the earth part, he's the heavens part. But together they make the man. So, yes, through one man. Adam, Eve, and her seed, then sin came into the world. So Adam is caught up in that, but deliberately Paul says that it was not the man that was deceived, but the woman was thoroughly deceived, representing their earthly witness part, subjected to futility, you see. We see Eve is the water witness and the earth under the heavens, and the heaven is the water witness too. Earth is subjected to futility, Eve was subjected to futility. And in that, Adam was subjected to futility. 
and the plan was devised before heaven and earth were ever made. It had to happen that way. If you go to Romans chapter 11, start at 7, and go down to 11, you'll see that Israel committed the transgression. Israel stands in the same position of futility. Same, they, Christ was going to come and offer the kingdom, but they were going to reject it, and they were going to kill him. That was God's plan. So that in the ashes of that, Christ's resurrection, that he could send the gospel out, and through our the faith of Jesus milled out for us at Calvary, that's the gift of God. That's what he gives us through the Holy Spirit, through the preacher, that he must send the Holy Spirit in him, hands the faith of Jesus, to the believers so that they can then believe. That's how we're called and chosen through the gospel. 2 Thessalonians 2, start at 13. So, Adam was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because God, who established the purpose of the ages or the eternal purpose, if you read the New American Standard Bible, to restore all things. You can't restore it until you break it first. That's what he did. For restoring Adam one member at a time. When you're on the earth, you're a member of Adam's body. When you obey the gospel, you're a member of Christ's body. You're part of the done, finished, seated in the heavenly places. Ephesians 2, start at 4. Go down to 7. Done, finished, restoring Christ. That's for the members of Christ's body, our dispensation. But the those that obey the gospel of the kingdom, guess what? They stand on the sea of glass out in front of the Lamb. We're members of the Lamb's body. Peter, John, and James, all those obeying the gospel of the kingdom, they're standing on the sea of glass. Their angel half is on the back side on the invisible sea that you're never going to see a word about. You can only understand through the types. When you see the two witnesses of blood and water, then you can realize that there's a spirit witness counterpart. There's an invisible sea behind the lamb. Can't see it. But when Peter, John, and James go to the marriage supper of the lamb, they're reunited with their angel half, and boom, they can join us in the lamb. And joining us in the lamb, who's the incarnation of heaven itself, they join us in Christ Jesus through works. We get it through God's grace, through faith, apart from works. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. All the, go all the way to 10. Because we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Peter, John, and James, they're saved by good works. Gospel of the kingdom, totally different. It's a water gospel. We're the blood gospel. You cannot mix them together. We learned that way back in the first video in this series. That was done. So, uh, let's see here. Let me, let me close. God's purpose includes the restoration of all things in heaven, Christ, and the earth, Adam, so that Adam can be restored in God's infinite realm where the Stenic Rebellion found him murdered in the first place. Eve's, her seed, represents the righteous, the victims, the sons of the day, the light, the ones being glorified, the ones getting on the good side of heaven, destined for heaven, while your seed, the bad guys, the Cain's, that are all around us right now. The world is full of canes right now. They are worthy of the coming destruction from the black star and the contagion that's sweeping the planet right now, the biological weapon. They're worthy of it. And at the end of the age, the 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 uh, which the end of this mystery time is the soul part representative. We're not we're not at the end of the age. We're at the beginning of the day of the Lord. We're at the end of this mystery time that none of the prophets were ever allowed to see. So there are similarities. Like the soul has similarities to the body, it overshadows it, but it's not the same thing. You have to be part of the mature that Paul is addressing, that understands the three witnesses, that understands to be able to make these connections. You have to be high up the food chain in seeing God's wisdom to be able to realize what happens at the end of the age happens here, but in a little different way. So then... Um, so your seed from the serpent are the perpetrators in the infinite realm, the ones that helped Satan murder Adam in the first place. They are destined for the lake of fire. So the good, um, bad seed are all sown together, only to be separated at the harvest, which is the judgment. Adam sin, if we, if we can judge and assign guilt. Because that's what the purpose, when you go into Adam, everybody wants to say, Adam, he's a bad guy, blah, 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 blah. If we can assign guilt, so his sin was in the act of listening to his woman. She's the one who bought the fruit and said, come on, here you go. So she was doing the work of the serpent, which those that were beguiled by Satan in the infinite realm went out and did his work too. 
in the destruction process. But these things that were preordained by the Almighty before heaven and earth were ever created, which is the reason that women are instructed to remain silent in the churches. I know, God bless you, a lot of ladies get mad at me for saying that. I'll quote it to you word for word. What is the, and there's a reason for it that ties to the types. You are a water witness. Men are the spirit witness. Image and glory of God. Woman is the image of man. Like the earth. Okay. So the women, you, the ladies here, you are supposed to use your man as if he is an angel. Image and glory of God. The spirit part is assigned to him. The emotional, intuitional, the etheric part is assigned to the woman. The man gets the esoteric part, the spiritual part, the mental part, and the physical part. 1, 3, 5, and 7. Take the 1, 3, 5, 7 of the man, the 2, 4, 6 of the woman, put them together. You got a man. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The man looks at the world through her heart, and she looks at the scriptures through his spiritual gift, using him just like an angel. That's why women are to, and if you read other parts, that they are to ask their husband and not say a word in church. Do you know why? Because when you do that, then you are replaying the deception that happened in the infinite realm. There's no way to verbalize that in a positive way. It's impossible. So, But whenever you look through your man's spiritual gifts, and then that's where God's word comes down to, pass down, you'll see that God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man. Man's the head of woman. It's that re that way for a reason. So that you look up the food chain, you use your man like an angel to access through Christ so that you can have access to God. That's the proper way. That's the way scripture lays it out. Pauline doctrine, if you want to call it like, if you want to call it that, which is, and a lot of people say, well, you're worshiping Paul. No, I'm not. Israel didn't worship Moses either. The steward is assigned by God. For this dispensation of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation it was made known to me the gospel that I wrote before in brief. Ephesians 3, just start at 1. Go down to 4. He's the steward. I'm not worshiping Paul. It's through Paul that Christ, our risen Lord, gave all this information about the mystery that was never given before, that was only given through Paul, that all of this came from God. God gives it to Christ. Christ gives it to Paul. Paul gives it to us. He's between us and Christ in all these instructions that he's given. But they're not Paul. Well, every now and then he says what are his commandment. And what he says, what's the Lord's commandment? And so he did, differentiates. And then he says, well, this is what I would do. Like, like relationships and women and things. You should stay like me. But, right? So there's different instructions that are given. And there's commands that are given from the steward. Just like there are commands given to Israel through Moses. It's important to realize these things to understand your place in this creation as a member of Christ's body rather than being a kingdom disciple in water, kingdom doctrine, right? We have to separate it. But there are veils in scripture. There are veils within us. And when you take kingdom doctrine, you mix it with blood doctrine, you're breaking the veil. You're breaking God's word. So even if you're saved. You remember Christ's body, your life is hidden with Christ in God. You fall out of fellowship with God by breaking these veils. God's still facing you, but you turned on him without realizing it. That's why it's so, so important to work through God's word and understand sound doctrine. That's the gift that God gave me to be able to see the veils, to be, to be able to see these things. Sometimes when you can see things, you even go somewhere. You see everything, but then you have to describe it to other people. It can get tricky. So that's the, the task that Lord God gave me in the, these instructions and in the Mystery Explained and all these other things to help you to see that you are blood witnesses in Christ. Paul's your steward, and he teaches sound doctrine, different from what's taught for Israel in the Old Testament and what's taught to the kingdom bride in the 13 kingdom epistles of the New Testament and to separate them. That's the uh, lesson for today, uh, for this week, and appreciate you guys' support very, very much. And uh, if you're a Mystery Report subscriber, and um, yeah, pardon, I had to turn off just a minute. Tanisha, I wanted to, I, I um, had a little difficulty. You called me last night, 
and uh, she made a statement that made uh oh my uh very 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 good friend here really smile she says my husband really loves you <laughs> and they subscribed to the mystery report program and um she got her nanos over and she described the program and then karen wrote me and then i realized this mystery report is very important and i appreciate karen appreciate you writing with your questions and i hope that these answers will help you because you're in chapter four now now you can have a better foundation to be able to go to chapter five and understand things and i hope that you will whenever you see you run into a roadblock god's trying to show you something there's like a rock in the middle of the road you can't see around it you'll write me with your questions and then we can remove those obstacles and you can keep trotting along keep going on the path and the objective is god's hidden wisdom it's hidden right in plain sight you were able to see it through the testimony of his three witnesses of spirit blood and water that began in the very first verse of the bible it carries all the way through the bible and includes the bible itself the scriptures have that 39 books in the Old Testament, 3 times 13. It has the 13 pony epistles, has the 13 kingdom epistles. The number of the 13 is very important because it's the number of the steward. Take Peter, John, and James, put Christ in the middle, give Peter, John, and James their three witnesses, and you have the 13. Paul is the steward of grace. Peter was given the keys. He was steward over the kingdom dispensation on the earth. Elijah's going to pick that up for the late rains bride. Go to James 5, 7. You'll see there's early and late rains. Peter, John, and James are early. Elijah's going to come, set up the kingdom. It's going to be the greatest kingdom on earth. And he's going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. If you go to Matthew 24, read verse 14. It says, this gospel of the kingdom will go to the whole world. That happens during the day of the Lord that's coming up. We don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. Those are water witnesses. Thank you again for your support. And when you do subscribe, let me go here to the website. I'll let you go. Whenever, if you're a non-subscriber, happy to help you get your nanosilver, the contagion. And there are many Christians that are out there. You know you're going to get raptured. I know I'm going to get raptured. For sure. 100%. You know you are too. But the thing is, I want to be around when the rapture happens. I don't want to be taken down by the COVID-19 bug, the biological weapon. I don't want to be raised with the dead first. But we are special that are living at the rapture. We're going to have emblems on our ephod, on our chest plate, showing that we are well, kind of like Elijah. We're up there doing our thing. Never saw death. We're going to have a special little emblem on us that shows our brethren that we were ones that were there. And I want it. And the way I'm going to guarantee that is my teaspoon in the morning and my teaspoon in the evening. And when the, the, uh, the herald strain comes, the microbial infection, the original, just a few microbes are going to try to get in there. And the spike protein is going to try to get inject in your cell. It's going to interact with your... Your RNA, your single strand DNA, I mean, your, yeah, the, the, the single strand nucleic acid, and then it's going to re start replicating, and then it's going to wait for the mutagen that's coming later in the timeline. You're not getting the information about the mutagen from anywhere else, but that's what's going to transform this bug into a monster later in the timeline. The way to avoid that threat that's coming later in the later timeline is to avoid the herald strain threat that's in our face right now. So that whenever we go around, this turns out to be the cycle, 2021, then we're going to see medical martial law around the whole planet, military everywhere. There's going to be chaos, mayhem, bodies piling up the street, hemorrhagic fever bleeding from every orifice of their body. And then all of a sudden, boom, we're gone. All I'm saying is, because that is not going to have a long gestation period. This is going to have a very short gestation period. People are going to they're going to get this bug. It's going to gestate in two to three days. They're going to be dead within a week. And that is not going to be this kid right here because I identify the threat and I'm creating the contingency to neutralize that threat. That information is here. So you do not have to be a Mr. Report subscriber or a Black Star subscriber to get your nano silver. And you can order. There's people that are ordering two, three orders because it, they know. The day might come when I the, they, the power goes down. There's no more YouTube. There's no more tarot on the internet. And whenever the threats come, you're not going to have resource. You're not going to have access to what you need to neutralize that threat. So highly, highly, highly recommend double orders. So even if you're non-subscriber, you see you're just going to pay for your shipping, but you're going to get over $600 worth of nanosilver. Did I pull those pictures up for you? This guy right here, 
holds four bottles perfectly. Individually packed, individually wrapped, and packed inside of a baggie. And uh, what that gives you, you're going to get 500 parts per million, and you're going to dilute it down using three liters of water for each two ounce bottle. It's going to create one two ounce bottle is going to create this much nanosilver. A double order. This is 600. You, should, you go to and research and find where you're going to get your nanosilver and look at the price, and then realize you're going to get they're going to sell you one of these for fifty dollars. You're going to get all 12 enough to make more than 12 of these is 12.67. You're going to even get two thirds of another bottle here. For $100 if you're a Mystery Report subscriber or a Black Star subscriber. And then the only difference is you don't want to be a subscriber. That's fine. Then uh, the only difference is that you're going to pay your shipping. That's right here. If you, uh, like, like yesterday, then uh, she was a non-supporter. And she's going, okay, I'll, I'll send you the $15. I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> go down to subscribe because it's $25 a year. And then I'm going to pay your shipping. So for extra 10 bucks, you get access to all these Mr. Port newsletters and things like that. So that's that's precisely what she did. And hope that you'll do that too. And uh, protect yourself against the threat that's looking at us right in the face. Get more information here at the website. If you have not watched this presentation, this webinar, I know it's kind of long. This lady is going to give you all the information about the benefits. So this is not just about neutralizing the, uh, the COVID-19 threat. It's also dozens of other health benefits. This was tested on 650 pathogens, success across the board, very minimal side effects. The, the side effect from your questions and my research is that the sperm count in men goes down some for 42 days and it pops back up again. But that's the way it was in rats and, 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 uh, rats and uh, rabbits. Not 100% that it's going to be that way with humans, but the evidence is there. But in finding defects, birth defects, things, I was not able to find that. Um, indications of that. Lower fertility rates is uh, the symptom that, um, that I saw as a side effect. But whenever you try to use anything else that's mentioned on the internet, any other thing, it's going to have a boatload of side effects. This is going to be the best choice. If there was a better choice, I'd be offering that to you. Thank you again. And get more information here at the website, and I'll see you on the next Mr. Report.